It's Solo P1. Welcome to the debrief episode 29. We're at Keep It Sports. And for all the audio listeners um, on the podcast, if you're listening on iTunes, listening on Spotify, remember to recommend the videos to your peeps and family and friends as well. So I'm going to bring in my co cues, my partner in crime. This is Toto Ama. Yeah, big up Solo, man. How's it going, Toto, man? How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Um... And I was going to say, I know it's a little bit late. Um, the Grand Prix was, um, I think it was about, was it a week ago now? Coming up to a week, just over a week, the yeah. um, Imola Grand Prix, which was an absolutely amazing Grand Prix. Um, well, it was more than a week or a couple of weeks ago now because we just had Monaco. Um, but yeah, it's um, it was a it was a good Grand Prix, good race. And um, I'm kind of forgetting what happened, really, because it's been a couple of weeks since we um, watched it. But um I'm just looking on the internet basically for a few um tip a um, few notes, but it is what it is. So how are you doing, Toto? Yeah, you know, do, doing all right. Um Scott, just trying to remember the notes from last time because I still got the notes down, so I'm just gonna try to memorize um the race. It's been quite 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 some days that I haven't um, watched it um back. But yeah, I'm feeling feeling all right. Yeah, so um you wanna start? You wanna you want me to kick off or I can look at the broadcast information, um, what they're providing us on the notes, um, but it is, it's not much. Um, they know exactly what they're doing as well. So I'm just going to look at, yeah, um, you want me to do the results first? Or... Yeah, you can do, yeah, you do the results, yeah. yeah. Oh, what we're going to do, we're going to go with the results first. It's Max Staffan. Um, I'll bring it up on you. I'll bring it up on the screen. Um, share the old screen. There we go. So it's there for everybody to see. Um, there's the results there. Um, this is via... The um the full results via the the website. Um, we're just doing that for you today. So I'm going to bring that in. Um, so the result the results um are Max Stafford um one, but again second Landon Norris. That's the one we remember when he was chasing him down. Mm. Very very. It was it, look the, the the race the first half of the race was wasn't that really good. Okay, I get it. I remember and I was falling asleep on the sofa. Everything's coming back to me now. If you know what I'm forgetting about it, it's because I was sleeping. I was sleeping for half of it, but yeah. when we thought that Max Verstappen was going to run away, but didn't we? We thought, yeah, it's going to be a Max Verstappen domination. It wasn't like that because Max, is, um, for some reason, the the Red Bull wasn't really good on their second stint, which was I was um, amazed, I was shocked because when it comes to the tires, we all know that um, Red Bull um, are probably the best on the tires because of the way the car is balanced. But this Grand Prix, um, you're still on the camera, by the way, Toto. Um, with this Grand Prix, um, it was um, Landau Norris kind of being clever than Red Bull, saving the tyres. Um, I thought at the first half of the um, the first half of the race, I never thought I never saw Landau Norris really getting in the mix, but he saved his tyres and he come back at um, um, uh, Max Staffan at the end. And I believe, I believe, if Landau Norris would have. Um, Mm, had a couple more laps left, maybe a lap left. I thought, I think it would have got Max. You made mistakes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did when you... he went over, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. everything's coming back now, isn't it? I'll let you run, man. I'll let you run. Go for it. Yeah, he did make a lot of mistakes. I think that shows that, um, you know, McLaren ain't really been in this situation for quite some time now. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've always been finishing it like if they had a half decent car, we finished fifth, sixth, but now they actually have a championship winning car. And I don't know if Lando's not used to that yet because Lando, he hasn't been in this championship with him now. It's all new to him. It's all new to him, all this is. He's, ch he's actually chasing and fighting for a world title. But going in that race, um, I really reckon if I said this, I think on a review, I think I said this on a review, I don't know, I forgot, that um, if Hamilton was in that car, he would have probably made no mistakes and he would have probably got close to Max Verstappen. I think Lando would have caught him, but he just made mistakes. That's all he did. He just made mistakes, you know, especially going into the last last corner of the hairpin, um, locking up, going into the grass. Not going into the grass, but locking up, you know, locking up his brakes, um, brakes getting hot. So, look, I think the Red Bull was vulnerable. It was vulnerable. You can't you can say that because... Like for, first, like lap of the race, that he was in clean air, Max Verstappen, and he was yeah. gaining, was gaining away, but well, not by a lot, by a little bit. Yeah. But then, soon it comes back mid race, where well, the tire strategy start to come in. 
And then Lando Norris changed on his, of course, new, I think, medium tyres. I think it went towards the end. Um, he started to catch and catch and catch. And then mm. that Red Bull started to get into that dirty air. Because, you know, when someone's chasing a Red Bull, you know how bad that Red Bull is in dirty air. So it's now, when, yeah, when, when Red Bull's chasing another car, you mean, yeah. Yeah. And um, Red Bull doesn't but, really, um, the car doesn't really um, comply well in dirty air, I'd say. Yeah. Um, that's the terminology I'm going to use today. Um, comply, um, it doesn't comply with, really. and um, other teams know this now, so they've worked it. They've worked it out. Um, yeah, continue, continue. Yeah, so I think the race was close, man. I, I was really, really, you know, annoyed at how Lando did not catch Max every single lap. He was catching Max boy for a tenth, two tenths, beating him in all sectors, beating him in overall lap time. I was like, no way, it was though, in it. Yeah. Remember, yeah, it's, it's, this is a mistake, just a mistake. Now, that one mistake when he went over the um chicane, remember that little yeah. dub, that little twisty chicane towards the end because I think it was, he was, yeah, towards the end, and, and he just he went clean over it and he lost yeah, so much time. Yeah, he was in DRS range, and yeah. all he had to do is just nail that corner, yeah, and he would have been got him on the straight, he would have got him on the DRS. Second. He would have been one to one second and it would have gotten to that Darius range. But now he made that mistake and he lost over like three tens. He went down to like one, exactly. one second. Yeah. And he knows this. So, yeah. He was just missing that DRS range that he needed. But look, at least we know that there's a season on now. Okay. We're going to talk about the thingy after. We're going to do the recording tomorrow for the um, Monaco. Um, this is like pre recorded We know we're going to do the one for the Monaco tomorrow. What, but. What I took out from this is we know that there's going to be a good season now. We know it ain't going to be Max Verstappen pulling away now. you got Fred Vassar coming out and saying, look, we we believe that we can catch the Red Bull. We believe that we can catch the Red Bull with our package as long as we keep upgrading. And the, the upgrades that they bring into the car work out, we can beat Red Bull. And that was coming from Fred Vassar, the, um, the team principal of Ferrari. Same thing with McLaren as well. They're confident with their car, their confidence with their drivers, and that's what we want to hear. We do not care. Look, I don't care who it was. If I look, you know I love Alonso, yeah. But if Alonso started winning every single race for the past couple of years, I'm gonna think, you know what? This is boring, bro. I don't want to watch this. What do I want to watch this for? Because we know what's gonna happen. It's it's actually like it's predictable, it's like the WWE, you know what's gonna happen. It got to a point where it's actually predetermined. That's what it seemed like to me. I know it isn't predetermined, but that's how it come across with, with us fans. But at the end of the day, right, F1's getting good again. F1's getting good. And it's if you look over the history of Formula One, it's like this. The first couple of years of the new regulations, the, the one team dominates, we know this. But in the third or fourth year, the other teams start clucking and start getting their crap together. And this is what we're seeing now. And I believe there's a lot of people in this championship. I don't believe it's just Max and Stafford now. I believe it's Lando Norris, and I believe it's Charles Kerr and uh, and Science as well. Um, I don't think Checo's in it. I'm no disrespect to Checo. I just don't think Checo's going to win the world title. Not with being a partner with Max Verstappen, it's just not going to yeah. happen. It's just not going to happen. And that's no disrespect to Perez over his driving ability. I believe he's a good driver, and I believe he's got the skills. And I believe if if, if he was unleashed, if Perez was unleashed to do what he wants, and he got the same as Max Verstappen, yeah. Everything the same, straight down the line, the same as Max Stafford. I believe Checo could take it to him. But while he's, be, while he's, at, while he's at Red Bull with Max Stafford, he's never going to win no world title. Yeah. That's just the way it is. And that's just the way it is. Maybe he's happy with it now. Maybe he's accepted his role as a second driver and he knows he's not going to win nothing. The only way he's going to win the race is Max Stafford somehow makes any mistakes. We probably will now. Um and he can clear up and try and do it then. And even then, when Max Stafford makes mistakes, he doesn't capitalise on it. You could see that Max Stafford's car is a lot faster than Checo's. It's just the way it is. He gets nowhere near qualifying. When it comes to qualifying, where is Checo? He, if he's got the same car as Max Stafford, why isn't he qualifying second and third all the time? He's not, is he? And it's not the fact he's not a bad driver. He's a badass driver, in my opinion. But he's just like, he's shackled that Red Bull. That's what I think about it, um, Dalton. Yeah, because um, it, it has since Adrian Newby, of course, um, going to leave the end of the season, going to Ferrari most likely. It's not been confirmed, but let's face it, he's going to Ferrari. Most likely, yeah. Um, Adrian Newby, of course, getting rumoured to Williams, but forget all that. I think the reason why Red Bull 
you know, he's where they're at now because Adrian Newey's not there. It's simple as that because as soon as Adrian Newey was, you know, rumoured to be leaving, that's when Red Bull started to slowly decline. Never decline just like that, but you can see the slow decline of Red Bull. Like, my, say, um, in this qualifying or in this race, usually when they've qualified pole, they stay first and then they go out and win the race by like 20, 15, 10 seconds, right? Because that's how dominant the Red Bull car was. There was nothing no one could do about it. You know, it's, they've got that genius behind the car, Adrian Newey, um, which li literally won all the races. Adrian Newey won all their races, and that's basically what it was. But now Adrian Newey's not there to support them and not support the engineers. They might have some cl clever people behind the engineers, but they're not Adrian, they're not Adrian Newey, are they? Adrian no. Newey can find a little fault in that car, right? And just fix everything. He can. That's what he made that car to be the beast it was, which it was a beast that car was. Um, we don't know what's going on in the backstage um, with all FIA and all that, but that car was a beast when it came out. But now, as soon as Adrian Newey is leaving and the season, he's not there, he's not even there to support. This is why if I was Red Bull, if I was because of the neutral, if I was Red Bull, I would actually employ Adrian. Um, Put Adrian Newey back, but Red Bull now have a chance at losing this title because McLaren now is on the uptake. Ferrari is now on the uptake. Like Leclerc will win in Monaco. Where did Max finish? Sixth place, sixth, fifth place, I think, in Monaco, losing a lot, a lot of points. He didn't even finish top three, and you expect a Red Bull to finish at least top four, top three, or even, you know, second or third, right? But he got a terrible qualifying. And, you know, the thing with Red Bull, they usually have a good qualifying, but now everyone's clocking onto them yeah. and hits, hits them to the race. Like Lando, from the, like Sainz, for an example, in Australia, I always go back to that as a reference. I think Australia was the turning point at which that Red Bull started to slowly decline because we saw that. And I think other teams saw that as well, that Sainz was um, qualified second, had an amazing start from the grid. Right up to Mac Verstappen, he got past Mac Verstappen, and then Max got um, a DNF and he had problems. Like uh, he starts to have steering issues and rotation problems and braking problems yeah. as soon as someone is chasing him. And I've saw that pattern, you know, in all through the race. He always moans about steering problems when someone is in front of him and actually challenging him. So that's when teams are starting to recognise now. Exactly, um, and it is what it is. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed that the season is going to be a good season because we've still got a long race to go. Just a quick brief over um, Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. Um, not really doing that well. Um, not finishing that well. Um, Lewis Hamilton in sixth place, George Russell in seventh. There was mere passengers in that um, in that game. I mean, not in that game. Too much woman about in that um, race. There was just mere passengers. Um, you can see that Mercedes now is probably the fourth or fifth fastest car on the grid. Um, there was interviewing Lewis Hamilton not long after not long after the race. So you can see that his heart's not in it. You can see that his heart is um, at Ferrari now. He's just going through the motions, going through the gears. I think the only race I'm going to see him trying is the one in Canada, which is this week um, in Canada. Um, we know he's won that seven times and he's got six bowls. What a phenomenal record he's got there. It's one of his diamond tracks. Along, along, we, got, we know his diamond tracks. Hungary, USA, um, Canada. Silverstone, and I think there's another one that I forgot now, but Canada is one of his diamond tracks that he's won so many times. I think he's going to try there, if, but um, and I think he's going to definitely try at Silverstone as well. But the only thing with Lewis Hamilton has he got the car to do it now? We know we we know what's happening at Mercedes now. Most likely that George Russell is getting all the um all the best bits, all the upgrades first before Lewis Hamilton because Lewis Hamilton is on the way out. We know in Formula One history that's the way it's always been. Um, so I don't know why a lot of people are complaining about it. I'm saying, oh, Lewis is getting screwed. No, it's just the way it's the way Formula One is. Uh, but um, Lewis Hamilton is clearly not, um, um, out in the team in the press. He's coming out in the press. He's blatantly saying it so everybody can see what he's saying. And he keeps repeating and repeating himself, a bit like 25 Lewis. He's not going to say the other thing, which I'm not going to say on YouTube. But you know what I'm talking about when I asked him why I'm losing because I'm... There you go. Um, but he's, um, I wish that old Lewis come back. That's <laughs> Lewis I like, man. The rebellion, aggressive Lewis man. Yeah. But anyway, um, didn't care either. But anyway, um, 
yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on Mercedes and uh, going forward before we wrap up? Um, I think at the start, the start of the race, they, they gained a lot of positions. I think they didn't gain a lot. Of Hamilton gained two positions off the start. I don't think he cares. And then he passed Sonoda, but then lost position in the race. And then same all, you know, where did Hamilton finish six? You know, that is the first time we finish outside the top seven in 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 this season. Because usually this season is usually seven, eighth, and ninth, seven, eighth, and ninth. That's all he finishes really, seventh, eighth, and ninth. He actually finished sixth this race, so that's all right. But let's face it, it's not really all right, is it? Hamilton at this point, he knows he's not gonna win anything with his car. He just knows that. You know the upgrades. He's gonna the upgrades that are gonna come to his car are probably bad ones or old upgrades. Russell will be getting all the new ones because he's gonna be the one that's gonna be you know testing the car, testing the new upgrades. That's what Russell's gonna do. Hamilton, yeah, did, yeah. Ham, I don't think Hamilton's second driver. I don't think he's a second driver. I don't think he's a first driver. I don't think they're an equal driver either. I think Hamilton at this point doesn't really care what driver he actually is. I, I, no, I think he's tapped out. I know because I don't think there's no. Even though probably he is probably the second driver now, I don't think Hamilton acts like he wants to be the second driver. You know, I don't, because... think, I don't think he cares. <laughs> I, I'm saying. I just literally I don't think he cares. I think he knows that for when he sees Ferrari, he, he knows he knows it's going to be a beast of a car, and he's walking into that team next season. He's got one year to get settled when the new new regulations change, and I've got Adrian New there. Boom, 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 because it's going to be all about the engine. Nothing about it's nothing about um this grand effect that's gone, gone, it's gone back to the old days the way it was engine power and Ferrari and Mercedes would dominate. Remember, that's what mm -hmm. it's going to be like again. So, I'm going to be heading off now because we've been going for 17 minutes. And for anyone on the audio podcast, listen on Spotify and iTunes, remember to recommend the video if you want to watch it on video. Or come over to our YouTube channel, it's called Keep It Sports, and that's our channel, me and Total Hammers. Total hammer, not hammers. But um, anything to say, Total, before we head off? Nah, nothing, nothing really else to say. Just um, right. let's keep an eye on more content. That's it. That's the one. So we'll be coming tomorrow. Another audio is going to be dropping. I know it's late again. It's going to be the the Monaco one, which uh, we're going to detail on that. But it is what it is, man. Episode 29 in the back, the debrief F1 Imola. See you later, guys. Big up. Big up. Big up.